Hey guys, we're talking Bailey Parnell's TED Talk. Is social media hurting your mental? Stay tuned. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What up, AfterBuzzers? It's your boy, DJ Jesse J, live in studio for AfterBuzz's first ever Talking TED Talks. Yes. I'm joined in studio with my co-host... Yasmin Tanris, what's up? We are having conversations that are worth exploring, right? Okay. And we are joined by an amazing in-studio guest here, Paige Smith. Hello. She, hello. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Afterbuzz as well. Thank you for having she me. She is a digital marketing director who has helped fashion and lifestyle brands really grow and engage with audiences across all different social media platforms. And who else do we have joining us? The Queen. Bailey Parnell herself, <laughs> TED speaker and one of Canada's 100 most influential women, or powerful women even. <laughs> Hi. Hi, welcome. It's so great to have you here. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. So we're going to be talking, obviously, about is social media hurting mental health and... Let's get into the clip. Yeah, so uh, we watched the video, right? And you know, they started the, sh the you started the TED talk off with this four day vacation, and you know, kind of take us back to where how you started getting into development with social media and and recognizing that okay, it's all fun and games until we look within ourselves. How did what, what's your background with that? Well, before I actually own a business now, which is soft skills training, which comes in a little bit later. But before that, I did social marketing and digital marketing, primarily in the higher education space and actually for a couple of broadcasters as well. And I was doing digital well-being work with some of our students. And when Mental Wellbeing Week came at Ryerson University, they said, hey, you're the social media person. Do you want to um, give a presentation on how that connects to mental health? Now, this was years ago now. But I said, yeah, sure, that sounds interesting. Of course, I did the professional research, fast forward, and that professional research um, led to the TED Talk. And in a way, my academic research was kind of catching up with my professional world. Uh -huh. And then fast forward, I did my, my master's in that as well. And all of this learning through my work um, came to a head at that trip that you mentioned, where I was there, I was supposed to be in one of the most beautiful places in the world, and you just find yourself addicted and pulling this thing out every three seconds. And, and I'm thinking, what is going on with me? If this is my life, personally, professionally, and academically, my whole life at the time, then what was it doing to everyone else who maybe didn't understand what was happening? Tell us about the excitement. Uh, like, what went through your mind when it did, it, TED Talks, you know, reached out or and and wanted you to be involved? Well, the interesting thing about TED is that they have the model, of course, the main TED Talks, but they have the TEDx model, which is actually a model that people can run all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so the, the TED event that I was part of was actually TEDx Ryerson U, which was a university event, and they were doing. Um, and they do one every year, and it was just that particular year that I put myself forward and that they found me as well, and it was kind of a nice synergy for the theme, which, funny enough, fast forward, and I don't even remember the theme anymore. <laughs> I remember the ideas, so I guess it did well. <laughs> ideas worth spreading it is. Okay. <laughs> um, so, well, we wanted to get into... So we have our two takeaways. Yes. Uh, we we want to call these our Tedjications from the actual <laughs> clips. For me, what the, really pulled away from me, like, honestly, like, I was blown away. I was Googling. I had to, like, talk to God a little bit after it, was this phantom vibration <laughs> symptom. And it's yeah. funny because then I started researching, which is the worst thing for a Virgo to do. Um, and I was like, am I sick? Like, how? How long has this been going back? And actually, it even goes back to the 90s with beepers. Um, and when did you become aware that this was an actual symptom? Um, and mentally, like, how do you... It's weird to me because to have this conversation, right? This is technology. And I start thinking, like, what things do I miss? Like, do I genuinely go home or if I do, I'm not around my dog? Like, there would be nights if I'm sleeping at a friend's house and my dog's not there. I, I feel like he's there or it's weird if he's not. My parents. I've, yeah. I, I, there's never been a tech there's never been a tech piece or something that 
didn't have some sort of soul or connection that I felt like. But it acts like it's full of life. Yeah. <laughs> so for you, <laughs> for you, where would, where did your journey into phantom vibration <laughs> symptom come come across? Yeah, well, you have to understand that with this um, sort of move into social media as a common medium today, that also came with the advent of the smartphone and mobile technology. So kind of what you're suggesting is the pager is actually more similar to the phone in terms of the mobile technology and the phantom vibration syndrome than, say, the television, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's like social media and then there's social media on your mobile unit. Mm -hmm. And if you never had... Um, social media notifications coming to your phone and you only ever use it on desktop, then you're less likely to experience phantom vibration syndrome. What's happened is just this brain training, essentially, this sort of physiological um, sort of socializing or um, over and over again, you kind of have that meant that physical stimulation associated with the mental um, sort of action so you know that when that vibrate comes when that happens over and over and over and over again your brain will start to feel it so now um, I've even read that our brains are starting to perceive an itch as as a vibrate oh yeah they were, they were saying like pressure from clothing hearing different music without your phone being on you that all that stimulates it and it's it's a, a form of hallucination like yeah crazy <laughs> i would get that though sometimes if i'm going on holidays if, as you've mentioned bailey in the beginning of your talk that yeah like you're trying to switch off but then essentially you're so used to something buzzing that you're just thinking it's there the whole time like i've had to really tune out of that after a while it takes practice <laughs> well and for bailey and P oh go ahead Oh, no, I'm just saying what we're what we're seeing now. We are we do. There is definitely, by every measure, a mass addiction right now to social media. But part of that addiction is physiological, in that you actually have brain chemicals released when you get likes. The same kind of brain chemicals that act on reward pathways of things like sex and other drugs. So, but then the other half of the addiction, which is also Potentially more interesting is the physical addiction, the actual physical habit of, oh, I've opened up my phone and I opened Instagram and I didn't even realize I was going here. I'm waiting at the bus stop and my first, I just I have a habit to pull this out. And if you talk to anyone that's tried to quit smoking, the first thing they'll say is that habit's the hardest to break. Yeah, it's so funny you say that too, because I mean, so like for you, Paige, you, you're always working with social media right, right. so we, my phone is always in my hand so is there ever a time where for you you said you know what uh within my day these are the hours that i will be using my phone or do you ever have to break away like that yes and no i go through time periods where we are like very busy and i and i do have to i really always have to be constantly plugged in and constantly on so um it's it is hard for me to completely clo like close everything off and take it off but I, I the thing about having my phone in my hand is i've noticed even my bone structure has changed yeah from I, that little my thing phone. on your pinky oh. that, yeah. from holding yep. it underneath the phone and that little thumb. it's so crazy uh, yeah. and, and do you yeah. get pins and needles in your hand or something i get that yep. sometimes yeah if you're laying down and you're on your phone and the whole time yep. do you ever give yourself permission though to switch off from it or? for sure i whenever i'm out at dinner with friends or loved ones i always keep my phone in my purse i actually got let go of a job at one point because I was at a dinner and it was about 10.30, my boss was trying to get a hold of me. Wow. And I didn't hear the phone vibrating because it was in my purse and I make a point not to take it out. And she was very upset about that, mm -hmm. so. Well, Bailey, how do you feel about boundaries? Yeah. Like, you know, for Paige to say, to say that 10.30 at night. Now, if this was the 90s, you're not reaching me. <laughs> you're not calling my house phone. Yeah. So why, yeah, do we, no why do we feel that we have, now that we have this uh, uh, all access to everybody uh, with social media? 24-7. Yeah. Well, you know, I have this model out right now that's kind of four steps towards practicing safe social. And... Step two is moderating your consumption of this risky behavior. And that means asking yourself questions like, am I doing this because I actually like it? Or am I doing it because everyone else is doing it? And I think part of moderating your consumption, just kind of like alcohol, for example, is knowing when to say, actually, I can't have any more. <laughs> like, I have to say no right now because it's for my own mental well-being. It's for my own family's well-being. Like, it, like like other risky behaviors, addictions impact others mm -hmm. beyond yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's 
part of moderating your cons consumption, and this is going to have to happen a lot more, especially with workplaces, is, is saying that I'm offline between these hours. Or, for example, if you do have a company that, you know, we all know social media is 24-7. If you do have a company that wants to have that customer service online, then it's making sure that you have almost like shift work kind of like other institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing I will say is that there actually is a difference between social media for social marketing and then the extension of ourselves. Because if you do that for your job, that is actually a business function. That's pretty normal. Like if you go do that for work, you still have to be aware of everything I'm talking about, but it's a little bit different than it actually being the extension of your personality. Right. And that's why I think the most interesting cases are personal influencers mm. where their personality is actually their job right <laughs> we were gonna have kingsley in here today i know we were promoting that unfortunately he had an emergency he had to deal with so we're sending all our best yes. to kingsley Sorry, he will be coming to a later ted talk uh a discussion with us but yeah i just loved what you uh, touched upon um bailey about identity and because often enough you know you are when you work when you've got a work title you kind of affiliate to a certain extent your identity to it even though you could personally be totally different from it so that same kind of reflection with social media i see that like from a marketing standpoint of view versus your own personal um profile right um but i wanted to touch upon something that you kind of mentioned about having social media impacting people around you and now one of my big takeaways from your clip or your talk was um, the dark side of social media in brackets actually people because often we say well a lot of bad things are happening because of social media but as you mentioned Twitter is just a platform uh, Facebook is just a platform Instagram is just a platform it's a platform to express yourself but it's also but it's really shown some of the ways that people are in nature or the way that they behave now I'm a little confused by it just because I don't know if it's because of the way that people behave or because of what people are exposed to that makes them behave that way what 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 what, what was that part about <laughs> that's what I was curious about like so sorry. So how people, um, it, it kind of sounds like you're asking me about uh, the dark side of social media or the dark side of people and almost which comes first. And this is, this is like an old, a very old debate in sort of academia about technological determinism. Does the social come first and then everybody follows suit or does the, um, or social determinism, which is more, you know, you know do we control how we're going to use these tools? And I will say there's two sides of this. Like on, to one degree, I, I do believe that I don't think social media is going anywhere. So I do think our like our best work should happen offline. Our most most of our work should happen building skills like self awareness, resilience, time management, um, just empathy, basic treatment of other humans, this kind of stuff. Because when you actually talk about a lot about the dark side of social media, we are actually talking about the crappy things people do online. And then we're also though on the other side talking about the reaction to that. And so both sides of that are people. And you know, I don't go out there and harass people online. I don't go out and talk about, so um, I don't complain all day online. Like I'm trying to model the kind of environment I wanna see. Am I perfect? No. But on the other side of it is the reactions. So if you're resilient, if you're self-confident, then the point is it doesn't matter what happens on social media. It doesn't matter if, if there's more, if there's another bad news story, or even if you get one mean comment, because you've, you've got the community around you. You've got the skills to be able to handle that. That all being said, the tech itself is designed to be addictive. There are things like the, the feed when you first come in that never used to be there, the endless scroll which never used to be there, red notifications to get your blood pumping and make you want to check. Like, like it is very much designed to be addictive, but I still think our best work will happen in, in, in us figure, figuring out 
our relationship with this risky behavior. Mm -hmm. That is so crazy. The red checks because you know I don't know if you guys have ever done color association, but red is go, yeah. go yeah. attack alerts, and it's the first <laughs> thing. Literally, I don't know what OCD it is of mine, but it's like if there is one notification, nope, clear. Yeah. clear. I see chicken pox. Yeah, it's <laughs> like pop out chicken pox. <laughs> Let me get rid of it. Uh, and you know, it, it's crazy because even you were saying about the bus stop thing. There was one day where I really what really started making me focus on this was I had kept looking at my phone and I opened Instagram up and it was a day I had it off and I was just at home and I was like all right I opened Instagram up and I literally put it right down and I went on the computer and was doing whatever and within three minutes I literally picked the phone back up and clicked on Instagram like four times I'm like I have like 30 addiction. apps on here and yeah. the only one I picked up was this Instagram because you see a like go through this or and just to <laughs> clear it you have to open it up and <laughs> The design is crazy, but yes. it, it, you know. But you can choose to switch that off. Exactly. Switch How do you blame? And now you, know? you can choose to have Instagram tell you, "Hey, you've been on 25 minutes already today." Oh, really? really? Yes. That's oh. a new, new, new feature. Things. Well, talking about new things, Bailey, because I mean, your talk has been out for the past like two, it's years. two years ago, exactly. And so, what has changed over these past couple of years? Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you asked that. I feel like I could have a second TED Talk now. But, <laughs> yeah. but I feel like you should. should. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But, so now where my research is primarily focusing, like you'll notice in the TED Talk, I focus a lot on the stressors on social media, just kind of basic concepts some basic explanations of things like highlight reels and social currency because we weren't even having that conversation then and to a great degree we still aren't but now what I focus on is um, social media as a risky behavior and safe social and basically it's a risky by by every measure social media is a risky behavior like sex or drugs or alcohol and we quite simply judge a risky behavior in in psychology as something where when you participate, you expose yourself to potential harm. That's it. We know for sure now that you expose yourself to potential harm by being on social media. Things like addiction, anxiety, stressors, traumatic imagery, um, harassment, all of this stuff. So we know for sure it's a risky behavior and we should actually treat it quite similarly to other risky behaviors like alcohol, like sex like drugs having similar kinds of talks mm -hmm. similar kinds of regulations even um, similar kinds of rules for what social media companies are allowed what government should be doing conversations in school about this stuff because we do know for sure that you expose yourself to potential harm by being here and if it's not going anywhere if abstinence not an option if abstinence is not an option how can we practice safe social and that's where most of my work is today is steps towards safe social well and Billy what is it's funny you said that because so this year specifically I want to say it was uh, February I'm not sure exactly but tumblr in the United States took a really big stance and said no mature content um, and they pulled it all and all, it, it, there was a whole big community who was really upset about it um, so everyone was moving to Twitter and back on Instagram <laughs> and whatnot but it, it, it was interesting because then I was talking to a friend who was from Canada and they're like well our tumblr still has you know all, all this stuff, stuff on it really? um, and it's interesting the programming that they're using on tumblr to filter it out it's almost like they fog every picture and when you go to click on it it almost wears tumblr and then they remove it so has there been any sort of development in that with instagram because yeah, my biggest instagram thing instagram does do they do that yeah i mean because i've seen some crazy things on instagram, instagram will really? just take but well it takes a while for them to get taken down sometimes okay. but yeah instagram's pretty good at yeah, yeah taking this, down flagged they, content i mean i've had this experience where i went to the museum in new york and took a picture of a picture i guess and it was like oh breasts. really it was just yeah male genitals any, any, i guess any, any nipples hilarious. yeah they, yes. it, it gets taken Instantly, down pretty immediately they yeah blurred it oh you know I, what? See, I don't know it's weird Go yeah ahead. i was gonna say recently i i read somewhere that rehabilitation centers for drug and alcohol addiction are adding social media addiction wow. programs that people can go through interesting Bailey, and, where, what have you kind of uh studied with this bailey well, that makes perfect sense to me because it actually, like I mentioned, has all of the same effects as, besides, you know, maybe not the same literal effects in your gut as other risky behaviors, but mm -hmm. certainly the same physiological and physical 
symptoms. It affects your life in the same way. It can take over your life in the same way. You can actually, especially if you're a young person, like it, you're already at the phase of life where you go outside the home to compare yourself as a means of socialization. And you don't really have anyone to turn to. There's no talk about it. There's no regulation against it. Of course you're addicted. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like I don't even, I don't even, I'm not surprised at all. And I honestly just feel bad for young people today. So I think that that's great because when you have a risk that addiction and these um, substance abuse centers are adding social media addiction, and it might sound wild at first, but again, it has all the same has all the same impacts on life, and and really should and that's exactly what you would need is things like community, conversation, awareness, holding yourself accountable. Right. Yeah. Well, talking about community awareness, um, talk to us before you go a little bit about your skills camp that you've set up. <laughs> So interestingly, step three in the four steps towards safe social is building the offline soft skills. And at first I thought, you know, I'm a little bit biased because I own a soft skills training company, <laughs> but actually that was what gave me the lens to see that that was most important because I kind of mentioned this earlier, but when I first went into my master's, I thought that I would find a more explicit correlation between time spent on social media and the rising levels of anxiety and depression. But I was wrong. What I actually found was no consistency at all. I found that some people said, yes, there's, you know, it's a bad situation. Some people said, oh, there's no statistical relevance at all. And some people even found the opposite, that time on social media improved the mental health of their participants. Mm -hmm. And so that told me that it is less about the networks themselves and more about who you are offline. And so Skills Camp is kind of, it kind of came full circle in my life. Skills Camp is a soft skills training company. We work with businesses, educational institutions, um, governments, nonprofits to build soft skills in their staff and students. And soft skills are things like communication, collaboration, teamwork, um, resilience, stress management, that sort of stuff. That's pretty mm -hmm. amazing. And where can everyone uh, check this camp out? So Skills Camp is B2B. Right now we work with um, orga organizations. But if you if you are at a school or if you think that people in your life need to see this, you can go to, um, you can find me online at baileyparnell.ca or you can go to skillscamp.co. And either way, you just find me and we will find a way to work together. Safe Social itself, I think, might be, I think I've realized I need to turn this into um, my second company ASAP just because of the, I probably, I've already done three interviews today. Uh, wow. You do, please honestly. Do. Please do. Yes. I would love that. Carry well, on in this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, thank you so much. No. Well, yes, keep us posted and we'll be keeping a lookout as well and do another TED talk as well with all the updates that have been going yes. on. Yeah, or if you're in California, please come by the studio. Yes. That would be awesome. I'd love to. Thank you awesome. so much, Thank Bailey, you, Bailey, for speaking to us. See ya. Bye. Bye. Okay. Whew. Well, we're going to continue no. this, right? So I much mean, to think about. Okay. A lot that we've learned, you know, like all the new things that are happening as well mentally. And I love that fact about the rehabilitation centers. Yeah, I did not know that. So we did yeah. a Twitter poll, right, about how many hours people spend on social media. Yeah. All right. So I want you to guess this. I'm going to give you a multiple choice question, all right? Okay. Zero to one hours, okay. one to two, three to four hours, or most of the day. What do you think the most popular? And we're talking this per day. Yes. Oh, gosh. I was going to guess, well, I know mine, so oh. I'm going to say three to four. Three to four. Is yeah. that yours also? Mine's two hours and 45 minutes. Wow, you're great. You know exactly. Well, to I'm, the it's minute. So on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm on it all day long, so. Um, Kills me to Most, think about. 50, so, what well, well, we have oh. uh, Star Drew, who has joined our live chat, who says Hi, he's Drew. guessing 10 hours a day. 10 hours a day. Ooh. You're probably Ooh. closest because 55% right. went with most of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. When my phone tells me I spend an average two and a half hours on, on social media day, I feel like that's wrong. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what Bailey was saying yeah. then in her talk. Anything like that more. we do so much of is definitely worth dissecting mm -hmm. and it's definitely going to impact us. Yeah, in her talk, she's like, we don't even eat for two hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is yeah. Well, like, here speak we are. for yourself. No, just <laughs> I know. I was like, well, wait. A each meal is an hour. 
<laughs> I'm like, I'm, oh, snacks. that's what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Talking about eating, that can be a form of stress, hey? Amen. So let's see about some of these stresses that she mentioned. <sighs> all right, the first one is the highlight reel. Now, Paige, with this, obviously helping other brands and whatnot, you know all about the highlight reel mm -hmm. and developing that. Um, what is what, what are some of like you're sitting down with a client right so what is something that you would work with them on on developing something like a highlight reel what is the highlight reel to you to me we're talking about instagram story yeah. highlights um to me you know and, and she hit she touched on this as well like it is putting it's showing the best of the best and you know i kind i personally i don't i don't necessarily want to speak on behalf of the businesses i work with but me personally um, I do try to incorporate the good and the bad because I, it's something I humanize. Think, yeah. yeah, it's something Keep I think real. I think about and struggle with on a, a constant. I think about it every single day, social media and how it affects us. And because I am working on social media all the time, but um, yeah, I mean, I think with brands and their highlight reels. I don't know. I, I wish they would make it a little more real life as well, especially the fashion brands mm -hmm. and the, yeah. Everyone doesn't right. fit the same way in every Right. <laughs> you want to show all different kinds of and people. And you only and... see one side of it, right? It's like mm -hmm. whatever's being represented. Well, and it's funny. Things. She had this quote, and it really stuck with me. We compare everything behind the scenes of our lives to everyone's highlight reel. Have right. you guys gone through that emotion and caught yourself in oh, it? Oh, 100%. <laughs> mm. I tend to, that's like what you were saying when you're laying in bed and you get that numb finger. That's when I go through it the most, when my body's really starting to shut. During the day and I'm scrolling through stuff, I'm never it's comparing. I, I'm not, my mindset isn't on comparing, but yeah. it's at the end of the day when I'm starting to shut down. I'm doing the slow scroll. <laughs> it depends what you're going through in life at yeah, that point, that's too. True too. Maybe your self esteem's already kind of low and and then that it's you're being kicked while you're down you're like holy crap yeah what am i doing how'd they I'm get this complexion what <laughs> app is that <laughs> well talking about that we're getting into our social currencies here because it's all about all sort of watching and likes and you know see who watches your stories and whatnot and like how many likes you get on a post addiction and i just i couldn't believe that yeah the economy of attention how we've become our own products like yeah. yes and what do you think about that do you do you feel that way something you mentioned to me the other day that I thought was so interesting is in human relationships now we just have the ability to mute somebody with one button oh, yep. and yes. I had never thought about that until you said that to me and now I've been thinking about it a lot it's crazy you can just mute someone and not see them anymore right and we never used to have that although I mean in the past when we didn't even have social media it was like you didn't even know if that person was going to respond True, or so not. It's, yeah. It didn't matter. <laughs> it didn't matter. It didn't yeah. matter. It really didn't. Now all but of a sudden still. we feel this need to care and yeah. say, you know, it's funny with the going to the social currency thing. So mm. we're all entrepreneurs here, right? So there's a part where you sit down and you say, I know for me, like, in, I never expected to be doing any of this stuff, but it's like, oh, I have to be a brand. Like I, ha your own I have to be a brand. How do I brand myself? And right. then, so, but now we're doing this online and everyone's doing it, that it becomes this market of people. It's kind of gross. Yes. It's a networking. It's kind of <laughs> gross when you Same. really like yeah. break it down. It's cool because yeah. we're, we're all getting to this level of something that we haven't really fully understood yet. That's what she was saying. Like the world of social media is the wild, wild west right now. The right. internet, you know, it can, it can go, go I mean, it can be whatever you want it to be and like making it your own and environment and whatever to an you extent. put out there that's you know yeah. yeah I do feel like they have a lot of control over us mm -hmm. the platforms they, they do uh, we, we yeah, get, you the get the fear of missing things. out we right. talked oh. about that you know it was funny at the beginning of this show me and Paige were on our phones yeah. oh all the time you know what I mean <laughs> especially if it's like you contact someone back in, back in the day you could contact someone if they didn't respond to you oh they're probably busy but let them have not responded to you then you see them on Instagram <laughs> oh that the emotion worst. That emotional You're break. Like, that'll oh break. God. You're ignoring me right now. Like, it'll what's break going couples on? up. It'll break oh, couples everything. up. Everything. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, couples well, break FOMO, up. Speaking of FOMO, yes. Dude, I mean, I totally experienced FOMO just now. You two having your phones. I was like, where's my phone? It's like my little baby's gone. Yeah. She had broken down in the TED Talk daily uh, three college, Canadian college studies where seven to ten students out of ten students yeah. said they would get rid of their social media accounts if it were not for the fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, have you guys ever tried to deactivate for like a whole weekend before? Yeah. I mean, I went on air 
airplane mode on Saturday, mm. and I've I've been on you know like go, gone far away like when I went to Africa and India, completely shut off social media, and I felt amazing. It and gets easier if you do it yeah, kind of consistently, but the it, first like, time. <laughs> it's so funny I'm kind of the opposite in the sense of like I long to deactivate and I, I personally cannot because it is work for me and right. it's how I've done most of my networking and how I've gotten most of my clients and built a business for myself mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's I like, would give anything to deactivate for good and I don't think I would have FOMO Really? Yeah. I, I might be an anomaly. I know a okay. couple of people who don't even have Instagram or social yeah. media. Oh, yes. for sure. No, I mean, they just don't want to fall to the detriment. I bet they're so happy. It's funny. <laughs> though, so uh, I wish I could remember off the top of my head, but there was another TED Talk where the girl had not purchased a smartphone ever in her life. Wow. And she had just a regular flip phone. And she was talking about her experience and that. And, you know, she doesn't, like she said, she doesn't, I don't get those urges that every I see everybody else having and yeah. I'm almost looking at people like yeah you know, that's crazy. kind of funny you could, you'd watch the world in a sense how it's evolving I work with a lot of authors and because uh, I work in the in the publishing world as well and a lot of our authors have flip phones oh. really yes a lot of them are old school and they like to promote the fact that they have flip phones and yeah. and I think that's great yes yeah. I think that's why that because that's why they're writers because they're actually present and being able to absorb <laughs> everything around and right. put, like write something beautiful yeah. <laughs> rather than looking at other people's lives and right. being involved in that. Look, I mean, another detriment of social media is online harassment, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so Bailey mentioned how 40% of people experience online harassment, 73% have seen it happening and then it's 100 percent worse for women and the lgbtq community which so i'm really sad. not surprised by right. but it is definitely very sad so you have to question your own safety a lot and i was like very taken aback by tyler clementi's story of him having killed himself after being outed you know it's happening more and more 40 percent seems low to me honestly like in this day and age it's so pushed in our face of what's going on Maybe and then i say what is harassment years, i say what is harassment right uh -huh. so trolling trolling right. but like would this, let me ask you this, this goes you to the work with of brands speech, right so with branding if mm -hmm. i'm promoting over sexualizing my product mm -hmm. right and there's really no control over who sees that, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously parental advisory has, you know, and censorship has kind of washed <laughs> away compared to where it was in the 90s. There are times where I look at certain advertisements and I'm like, this is a little bit much. This is, I wouldn't want my child looking at this. And what it stimulates in a lot of kids' brains could almost be to a point of harassment because now I'm hating myself. I'm learning, I've been taught to hate myself because oh, I don't look like this person. Um, have you, what do you guys think about that with branding? And you know, it's not a form of direct harassment, mm -hmm. right? You know, it, obviously it's a, a little bit of a reach, but I don't know, there's, there's something about that that bothers me with the online world. Going back to the Tumblr and how mm -hmm. Tumblr really took this, this stance and was like, we're not gonna allow this here because yeah. of this what... has been going on forever though yeah. with billboards, mm -hmm. magazine ads, right. everything, especially in the fashion. I keep saying that the fashion industry, but it is just but that's just one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Industry, you know, I think that's a, a tough thing to with the trolling. The trolling and harassment's a little different, and there's ways that I have always told clients that you can. I think the best Hit way the to <laughs> yeah the best yeah. way to get rid of a troll is to not give them a platform. Mm -hmm. You know, once people start responding to a troll, that's like. They're excited. They're like, job done. Yeah. I, I completed what I was set out to do. And, and inst I know on Instagram you can have um, certain words that if someone leaves a comment with a certain word in it, the comment just won't show. Oh, you mm -hmm. need to teach us a lot Which of stuff Which is great. Today. <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think turning off comments in general is also really a great thing. You mean thing. on the stories or on the post? On on feed. So if you post, uh, an, if you, let's say you're a celebrity, you post a photo to your feed, you have the ability to turn off comments. But doesn't that mess up the algorithm? You know what? <laughs> People can calm down. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all about the algorithm. Well, it seems to I know, be, I, I, I hear this every day. I'm like, I don't know. Instagram's always changing, it's changing. the algorithm. Yes. Is there really one, you know? That's what <laughs> no, we go down it's to. It's ever changing. <laughs> and yeah. They're, and they're however they want it to go. Ugh. 
Um, All right. Well, I want to know some of these little tidbits. Yeah, so we have our special segment. We call it our top <laughs> tidbits. So in this one, we um, oh, wanted yes. to know from you, um, being an expert in your field, what are your okay. three top apps that you use for, you know, your like photo editing, video editing, or finding inspiration and accounts to follow that you think are really great? Yes. Okay. So note. photo oh, and video media. editing. <laughs> we're like beating social media. Yeah. So. We're like we hate no, social media. Like, what are the good ones? Um, so favorite photo editing apps. VSCO Cam has always been oh, my yeah. favorite. I've used that one since they launched. I still use it every day. It's still my number one. Um, Huji is a new one. That's it. it filters photos like um, thirty-five millimeter film. Oh, it's wow. kind of fun. I, I'm more of I'm a vintage. I'm an old school '70s babe type. I'm girl, like in the, so the '90s VHS cam that. stuff. Okay, that so that's that was that's one hard. I was just showing her. Oh, really? Yes, when we were trying to disconnect. I was, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hold on, but she there's this new video app. app. <laughs> it's like '90s <laughs> disconnecting. It. Called it cool. VHS cam, I think. VHS yeah. rad. Yes, yeah, it's yeah. great. She's um, still being creative, though. You know, still switching. Yeah, like with that kind of stuff, I think I think that's oh, it's so fun. You can you have the ability now through a lot of these apps to do f photoshopping on photos or creative graphic design you know through apps like over and that's that's how we got our ted talk talking yeah, ted talk okay. over, <laughs> over is the app that i hate that i just said this out loud but i like to also share so over is the best thing that's ever happened yeah. and um, canva i love it I can love make a anybody canva. a graphic designer literally amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. The canva so is it, where to find trends um I think the obvious one is Pinterest and Tumblr, obviously, or going to your the search page and kind of yep. seeing because that's it, they know what you're following, they know what you're into, so you can always stay on top of that. Right. Um, inspiring accounts to follow. I I follow a lot of authors that are really wonderful, and and the poetry world on Instagram is awesome. Oh yes. Um, and huge thriving world. Um, I also. Really, I'm a sucker for the good quote, which is kind of like a very sensitive account. I love that for when one. You're, yeah. I follow that one too. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, maybe I shouldn't follow this because it's making me a little too sensitive. But <laughs> it's feeding my sensitive uh, side of myself. But I, it also makes me happy. You know, and Bailey mentioned this too, following account, like unfollowing celebrities, unfollowing the people that are Woo! making you feel horrible yes. about yourself. And replacing those accounts with ones that are positive. I just followed Bailey today because I'm really excited to see her videos that she posts talking mm -hmm. about social mm -hmm. media addiction. I want to jump. You know, we're gonna we're getting into our yeah. Teddy section, mm -hmm. but yes. well, our I, Teddies are our fans. Yes, um, you know, we <laughs> asked you guys a couple questions throughout the week, and make sure you guys follow Talking TED Talks as we'll be asking you guys more and getting the conversation going. Uh, one of the co questions was, have you ever deleted a photo? We received 51% said yes. 49% said no. And this was deleting a photo because it didn't receive a lot, enough, enough likes. Enough likes. 51%. So, ha I mean, That's half, half and half. Is that purely because it didn't receive enough likes? Because I yeah, deleted a photo was, just because I didn't like the question it. Was, yeah, the question stated too. due to likes. Be due to oh, likes, okay. yeah. That makes sense, um, I guess. And then the next one was, have you ever waited to post a selfie? And 78% said yes. And 28% said no. That hmm. they're just out here taking their selfies yeah, and posting. Yeah, like they don't care, but others do care. And I definitely do. At what do. time I'm they like do it as well. Specific just about when I post for something. For the most likes. <laughs> I've become that. You know, I never really cared about the likes. But you know what? I think it's ever since that algorithm thing came yes. about. And we started figuring it out as well. Looking then, at my insights. like Yes. Oh, yeah. And then it's all about time to post. Yeah. Right, yeah. Because marketing is telling you, like, okay, you know, these times of the days and that day of the week is the best to post. And then people got aware. And hmm. now I I think that's why we're becoming personally like, yes, this is what I'm going to post now, too. And then we had the deactivating. Uh, have you ever thought about deactivating social media? And we kind of broke this up into two because I know you asked what social media is to deactivate. Yes. So 78% said yes. Yes. They have thought about it. And 22% said no, they haven't even thought about it. And most of them said, well, Facebook, because they don't see any sense of it. Yep. But then also Instagram, just because... It, it was de demoralizing, like seeing all these girls' bodies, how amazing mm -hmm. some of them look. And that's really creating that whole body dysmorphia type of um, aspect. And just, yeah, feeling really bad about themselves. <laughs> 
FOMO. 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 So let's get into, let's wrap it up and get into our tangible tools, what we can do to save ourselves from social media. And this is, of course, based off of what Bailey has said, Mm -hmm. because those were really amazing strategies. And first of all, it was recognizing the problem. So what kind of effects is social media having on you? What are you noticing? Like for myself, lying in bed late at night and like scrolling through, I'm like, God, it's two hours gone by. I, I should sleep. I'm tired. Why am I still doing this? Like, that's the kind of effect, you know? And then why are you scrolling and the reasons for acting upon it? So we have that. Then we have auditing, you know, auditing, making, taking that diet. One thing, too. And actually, that, you know what? I actually way. realized this with you. I'm oh. like, I have your phone number. But why am I texting you through Instagram? You know, we get so... You so text and DM and everything. Call. But the same and conversation. Email, One everything. conversation with her is... On multiple three. platforms. It's like, okay, everything. hold up. I do that too. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's so yeah. interesting yeah. to me because... There's it, so many channels. There's an emotional difference, I feel like, on each one. True. And I, I I'm like just that. learning that. And yeah. I'm like, no, no, no. So that's a part of my, my auditing that I want to do is... No, bring it on back and connect the right way. (laughs) I love that how you put that into words. Um, The next step is creating a better experience. So as we've mentioned, unfollowing some of those celebrities and things that just really don't make you feel good. But also, I felt like this was another big takeaway is you you don't have to follow your friends. Mm -hmm. Like, if your friends are are shitty people online, you don't have to follow them. They can be great people in person, but not online. (laughs) <laughs> well, I, th- this year specifically, I decided, you know, there's certain things I don't want to see. I don't not I do not follow any celebrities um, because I work in reality TV. So my brain is always, how do you make this person this? How do you make this person that over over sensualizing people? Mm. And so for me, I don't want to be sold on that. So mm. getting rid of, uh, you know, and she was a, a Bailey. You, you were a part of helping me with that because I was like, you know, I'm going to go and get rid of these. Uh, stores that I follow. I don't want to look at the latest trends or this because it's telling me you need this, you need this, and then I feel less about myself. Mm. Um, I'll go to it when I'm ready to go to it (laughs) and hunt it down. But, you know, making sure, creating that positive world for yourself. Um, And then, like she said, modeling good behavior online, which... I'm sure that you <laughs> do very well, yeah. as I've seen on your page. You know, um, it's it's hard for, you know, again, someone who works in reality TV, my world is to deal with trolls, deal with the gossip, and deal yeah. with that. That it, drama. Yeah, that w- it's hard for me to disconnect from that when I go home, and it's like, wait a minute, this ain't my life. This is their life. But it's, yeah. it, you know, when you're surrounded by it so much, it's hard to kind of portray that. So bringing your behavior to these platforms um, instead of allowing the platform to kind of take over your behavior mm-hmm. is what I And got. also I find like, you know, it's whatever you post, I feel, I know it's like, okay, maybe you're showing the best of yourself, but it's also ultimately teaching the best. Because I find it interesting when you see different profiles and some of them it's like a lot of selfies, just selfies, selfies, yeah. selfies. Yeah. And then it's like, well, you know, why are you trying to share about yourself? Or what can you, how can you help elevate people through your platform? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a great way of modeling great behavior. And through your commenting and, and engaging through, with exactly. people. That's something I really make a point to do is, you know, leave uplifting comments. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, Paige, thank you so much Thanks for coming for through today. Us. Where can everyone yes. follow you and keep in contact if they want? If they have any social media app questions, or <laughs> well, I guess you could follow me on Paige Victoria Smith on Instagram, but you don't have to. <laughs> which don't. is the takeaway like from it. today? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't feel the need by any means. Well. <laughs> That's right. So we're going to have a new video for you guys next week. So make sure you guys uh, are checking us out. You guys can follow us at Talking Ted Talks. Yes. And we'll be putting out a bunch of polls and questions. So do make sure you tap into our Instagram stories and Twitter polls because we do want to put those out for next week's video. Yeah. Now, where can everyone follow you? Well, if, if you, you would want like it. to. <laughs> <laughs> if you like my behavior on it, it's at Yasmin Tanres. Oh, and you guys can follow me at DJ Jesse J, but we do need you to follow Talking Ted Talks, yes, <laughs> if do. anything from this, <laughs> across all social media platforms. Thank you guys for joining us, uh, and shout out to Bailey once again for yes. for and surprising us with that. Shout out to our guests on our live chat chat as Teddy's. well. Star True, Sign- 
sorry, Sign Dimbero. Sign Dimbero. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Keep up the good chats and comments. Till next we'll week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Ciao. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.